You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Welcome to episode 263 of Teach Better Talk podcast. My name is Ray Hewer, and as always, I'm with Jeff Gargas, and we have been talking shop for a long while here, <laughs> right before we just started to hit play, and we've covered a lot of topics. So, um, should we catch them up? Should we catch them up on our conversation so far? I mean, I don't see why not. I mean, we've been talking to Chris here for a while before actually like letting them cut this and, and start it. We should preface, when we say we've been talking to Chris, we mean that Chris gets this audio days and days later, but we talk to him. It's a very one-sided thing. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of stuff that he has to cut out so that you guys get, like, you know, somewhat reasonably valuable content. I think he said that on the 12-hour live segment he was in. He was like, yeah, I really like when you guys uh, talk to me. I just cut it out. It's usually, like, the first 10 minutes. I'm like, oh, (laughs) my God. He said, it's only – I'm sorry. Something about – I think I apologize. He said, well, it's only, like, the first 10 minutes. I'm like, it's a long time. (laughs) It's a long time. We did maybe do that today. So, sorry, Chris. Possibly, yes. Whatever. Yeah, there's a a chance that happened. Yeah. So, how are you – I'm good. We just did the 12-hour live uh, a couple days ago. Um, By the time this comes – by the time this comes out, it'll be like almost two weeks. But when we recorded, it was three days ago or two days ago. Um, and that was a long day, but it was awesome. It was fun. It was really different. good, really good segments. If you guys yes. didn't get a chance to watch, there was a ton. But from the feedback we've been getting, like the grid method Q&A that we did was was mm. really fun. We talked yes. about being an equity advocate. That was super popular. We talked to SEL with Mandy Frainwick. That was super popular. I interviewed Kim Bearden, which was really, really, really fun for me. Bucket list item. And then Mickey Smith Jr. stole it out of the park. Um, Mickey I Smith also Jr. Loved... became Dave's hero. Like, that was fun. Yeah, absolutely. And then the admin mastermind, like, was one that I think yes, a lot of the... people enjoyed. It was awesome. For sure. So, anyway, go check them out. Actually... They're all in the academy. Yeah, you can actually go to teachbetteracademy.com. It's a free course in each segment. Um, there's 15 different segments that are all broken up. In the academy, so you can go through and watch them however you want. So um, exciting! So talk about so we, that was twelve hours live. Yep. What I want you to talk about is not twelve hour live, but it's going to equal to like seven uh, hours or something. I don't know because yeah. I don't know how long we're doing. But we're going to do seven days in a row this week. Like it's already it's starting. Like when you listen to this, we may be live right now. I don't know, but we're going from May third through the ninth. We're going through the ninth. Um, yeah. Seven days going live every single day. I don't even know what time that's at, but I know you know all this info. So who's on the docket for this? What's gonna, the schedule? I, I'm going to let you keep talking because you have like the <laughs> the bare minimum, barely any information. I know and that it's I like, am live on Friday night with Chad Ostrowski. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the boys are back in town kind of thing going on with that. Um, that's about all I know. I know okay. I know Maurice is going to be live one day. Wow, this is really detailed information. Our listeners and are going to get so much from this. I'm guessing that it's going to be on Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube, and Twitch. Yeah, true. And at Teach Better Team. <laughs> and there you go. That's what I got. So, guys, here's <laughs> actually the details if you want to tune in and not just catch it after the fact. Because we always love that anytime we stream on social media, everything's saved, right? Anytime you go sure. live on Facebook, it saves for you. So, anytime we say that we're live and you miss it, no stress. You can watch it after the fact. But... It is really fun to catch it live because we really believe in interacting with the comments. It's an entire experience anytime we're live where we get to chat and talk shop with our network. So try and catch us live because it just makes the conversation more entertaining. (laughs) But we were talking about Teachers Appreciation Week. And to be completely fair, but you're our podcast listener, so we do like to tell you the secrets. Our plans for Teacher Appreciation Week have been completely blown up in flames. Like, like we had this good idea, way, though, right? In a good way. Oh, in a in a well, d- depends. That sounds on bad. That sounds bad. It sounds like we had plans and they all fell apart. No, no, no. I mean, like we had plans, but when you plant a seed in like the member of the Teach Better team, it like creates three million ideas okay, so let's that think everyone of wants other to execute. Than blown up with flames. Okay, I it. mean, How about, like exploded with glitter or something fun you know like okay glitterbomb.com <laughs> over here guys it was insane uh, so what happened bad. was 
We went to a few of our Teach Better team leads and said, hey, Teach Appreciation Week, we support teachers. Maybe we should like do something special. Holy moly, did this take off. We have a ton going on this week, but talking about one thing going on is we are doing a seven-day live series to celebrate teachers. So we're going live every single day, May 3rd through the 9th. That's a Monday through Sunday. That's we're like going an live. entire week. It's an entire week, Jeff Gargas. It's at 6 o'clock Eastern. And ask me why it's at 6 o'clock Eastern, Jeff Gargas. Hey, Ray, why is it at 6 o'clock Eastern? Because we do so many stinking things that we're live for. It was the only time we, <laughs> could, only make time we could make it work. So it's the same time every day, right? Literally same yeah, time every day. Literally, because yeah. there's because nothing is different that week. We still do all the same stuff. We're sure. just like adding an additional live. I like it. So every single day we're going live. We have a featured guest and a Teach Better team member. And sometimes it's two Teach Better team members. Sometimes it's a member of our speakers network. But they all have topics they're sharing on in addition to then taking your questions and sharing their appreciation for educators. So here's the layout really quick I'm going to go through. On the 3rd of May at 6 o'clock Eastern, everything's at 6 o'clock Eastern. That's when this comes out. Yes. At 6 o'clock Eastern... We are talking about grading and evaluating for understanding with Caitlin Giordano and Megan Deegan, which is going to be so much fun. On the 4th, we're talking about re-engaging students after COVID with Kevin Butler and myself. We're going to have a blast, let me tell you. Okay. I know. On the 5th, we're talking educator mental health with Mandy Freilich and Dave Schmidto. On the 6th, Okay. We're talking about coaching and supporting coaches in the new normal with P. Sloan Joseph and Dave. Wait, wait, I messed that up. Mandy Freilich and me, P. Sloan Joseph and Dave. Wait, I messed that up. Did you get so that? You, you get Kevin Butler and I Mandy, get Mandy. You get I Kevin. get Mandy who and Kevin? Kevin Butler. Oh, me. I see who was in charge of this, but go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Are you kidding? I'm not <laughs> passing up opportunities to go live with Kevin and Mandy. No, crazy. <laughs> Dave Schmidto is going live with Peace Sloan Joseph. Sloan. That's going to be a fun combo right there. Oh, it will be. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Next. Then we have uh, on the seventh instruction for today with Chad Ostrowski and I don't know, some guy named Jeff Gargas. Super cool. Okay. And Saturday. And then Saturday is counseling through crisis with Joshua Stamper and Maurice Martin. Ooh. Ooh. I'm right? pumped for that one. Right. Yeah. That's going to be then, fun. Last but not least, we're going to talk reflection and continual growth, that mindset, the process of all that with Olivia Chan and myself. I'm really excited. Nice. Ooh, I like yeah. that. That's great for me. That's going to be fun. So um, question, Ray. Question. Go away. Go away. <sighs> Say I'm like, oh, I didn't quite get all that. And I don't really want to rewind this podcast because I want to see what Dave has to say in this episode. Is there some place that I could go that I could just make it, I don't know, maybe add it to my calendar or something, to my Google calendar, so I don't miss any of this? Wow. What a great question, Jeff Gargas. You can actually go to teachbetter.com slash events calendar, and you can add all these details with reminders and updates in your calendar was, over at teachbetter.com slash events calendar. That was a good idea. Wow. That was a really good idea. I wonder who thought of that. That was a great idea to do that. Yeah, it really, really was. That was a good idea to do that. Okay. Um, hey, awesome. by the so, way, I wish I could get credit for that calendar idea, but it was totally in the ambassadors that made us do that. Well, thank you, ambassadors. We love our ambassadors for lots of reasons. We do. Um, so that was awesome. So yeah, so that's all teach all this week. we got all kinds of stuff going on, which is really fun. So watch. Yeah. Hey, guys, I you ch- do you want to yeah. preface. There's like a ton going on this yeah, week. Like, this was one piece so i'm yeah. glad you guys are joining us live but please go check Make out sure you check out the team. instagram uh our instagram stories all week because we have people oh taking God. over all week long too so that's awesome as well and all the codes like holy cow yeah free oh yeah uh what's the code 25 percent off uh any course and and any swag item it's just we love you right we love you. Just we love you. Just put it we in either, either site at teachbetteracademy.com or teachbetterswag.com. Good, good call on that. Um, hey, Jeff, psst, there's also a giveaway this week. Anyway, we should oh, move on. Jeez. Okay. Well, they have to figure that one out on social media. Um, <laughs> you probably got the comment boom somewhere or, or something. <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about the episode. David Frangiosa, uh, good dude. We've been, uh, well, this was like our first, like, we were connected to him, but we never really got a chance. To, we've never really got a chance to chat with him a lot. And this was awesome because his book had just come out. So we talked about that, but David is a high school science teacher, a teacher for, I think he said 15 years. Uh, he's over in, in Jersey. Uh, good dude. We talk, we get into uh, with his book. His book is about going gradeless, so he gets in there a little bit. Um, uh, there may or may not be some Chad Ostrowski references in there as well. 
Uh, really dig this guy's passion uh, and his uh, reflection on failure. And the dude knocks the, the six questions out of the park. So good episode. Ray, other than not being able to win his book, which someone else is going to be able to win, what, what's the takeaway here? The takeaway, guys, is that I already bought it. So <laughs> it's in my Amazon cart. And for whoever wins the book, uh, we should do a book study. And if you don't win the book, by the way, I'll do a book study with you. Go buy the book, but put it in your Amazon cart. I literally did it during this episode, so no shame. Whatever. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's get an episode 263 with David Frangiosa. Hey, what's up, podcast? It's Jeff. Don't worry. I'm going to get you right back in the episode. But first, I want to introduce you to our Comeback Better packages. You know, COVID-19 and the coronavirus pandemic has really changed so much about how we live our lives, how we socialize, and especially how we run our schools and classrooms. As we begin to, to, to look towards the next school year, things are going to be different. But we can be better because of it. That's where our Comeback Better packages come in. These have been strategically designed to support you and your staff as you prepare for or manage things like preparing a, a growth mindset, preparing to close the learning gaps created by COVID-19 and school closures, restructuring curriculum alignment, uh, continuing uh, creating safe environments for dialogue and reflection, supporting an in-person or virtual or hybrid learning environment, and supporting staff and students whose socioeconomic status has changed due to COVID-19. We are here for you. These packages are 100% customizable to fit your staff, your students, your community, and your needs. Find out more at teachbetter.com slash comebackbetter. Let's get back to the episode. All right. We are here. We are chatting with Dave Frangiosa. And Dave, man, it's so awesome to have you on the podcast. Um, super excited to chat with you. We just found out that your book just came out, so that's super exciting. We're going to talk about that a little bit. We really want to just kind of get into you, your backstory, what you're all about. But before we get too far into that stuff, how are you feeling right now, man? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, not only does book just come out, guys, but it's ongoing grade list. Like this is going <laughs> to need to be discussed. Dave, I I understand that we're a new connection, but I I might become your your fast new best friend, just so you're aware. <laughs> Whether by if you hey, by I'll, choice or by force, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm open to it. Well, I appreciate that. Well, I want to make sure our listeners can get to know you because uh, we're recently connected. I'm really excited to stock all things, Dave, uh, coming up here in a bit. But our listeners also, I'm sure, want to hear about your background. And then, of course, we'll ask you all these questions and a, a ton about your book. So would you mind kind of answering that age-old question of like, hey, Dave, what do you do? Well, I'm a physics teacher, but when I talk about what I do, I really refer to myself as a coach in the classroom. Um, I've kind of gone away from those traditional practices, and um, I, I really just try and remove all the obstacles that get in the way of kids learning. And so when people ask me what I do, that's really what it is. Um, you know, I've gone through a few iterations of who I was as a teacher, which I'm sure we'll get to, but. Um, that's where I'm at now. Uh, the guide on the side coach in the classroom approach, that's, um, that's been very effective for me and I love it. I teach high school physics, mostly 11th graders. Um, and I deal with a lot of students that typically, um, aren't the most successful with school. I love it. So we've already mentioned today, so I'm gonna just going to take us right to the book right off the bat. So the book just came out earlier this month with Cor Corwin. Um, give us the breakdown. Let's know, tell everyone what the title is and break down like what it's about. I know it took a while to come together. So I really want to hear that sort of that story. Can you give us the story of like where the idea spurred from uh, the process of putting together and how you're feeling now that it's out? Like who's the book for everything? Yeah, sure. Um, so the book, it's going gradeless, shifting the focus to student learning. And that's really that's been my mission for the majority of my career is how do we get students to truly learn? Um, cause earlier in my career, it was all about grades. It was, um, you know, how do I get this grade or like, you know, it was goal oriented and they're looking at June in September and not developing the skills that I knew that they needed to have in order to be successful. Um, and really this kind of spurred from frustration. And I got to a point where I, I just couldn't take it anymore. And I couldn't have that same conversation over and over again um, without getting any different results. I had tried, um, you know, the, 
the inquiry based, the project based learning and um, with some limited success, but it always kind of plateaued. And it wasn't until I started putting a lot of these concepts together that I started seeing, um, you know, a, a real benefit to the students. And um, I actually enjoyed teaching a whole lot more as, um, as we shifted to this model. So about six years ago, he was my assistant principal at the time. He's currently my principal, um, Tim Wheeland. Um, he asked me, well, he was actually talking to another teacher about piloting a gradeless classroom and I overheard it. And it was during one of my most challenging years. I said, I want to try it. I knew nothing about it, had no background in it whatsoever, never read an article, a book, anything. And so I just kind of like dove in and this was earlier in the year. And I had planned on going through that year and rolling it out the following September, but I kind of had everything that I wanted to pilot done by October, November, and everybody in the district was so supportive that I actually rolled it out at the semester break, which was awesome because I got to collect a lot of great data. I got to compare the same group of students from a traditional graded model to um, you know, a, a gradeless or standards-based grading model in the second half of the year, where really the only thing that changed was the model. And so um, I knew the students, they knew me, nothing about the course changed, none of the assessments. Um, it was really just the reporting of it. And even though admittedly it was a terrible model and we're way past where that started, I saw you know, some wins from students, students that would typically be out of the classroom. Um, the majority of the period wouldn't hand in work. Um, you know, the one student, she had like a 44 average in the first semester and it wasn't because she couldn't do things. It was, she avoided because her effort, it took her more effort, um, just to get to where all the other students were. And it was a little frustrating for her. In the second half of the year, she didn't leave the classroom as much. Um, she was participating in labs. And when she started getting those authentic wins of, I can actually do something here, um, she flourished. And that second half of the year, she wound up getting a 77 in that model. And just like that growth from that student alone with all the flaws that I saw in everything that I was doing, knowing that a student could grow that much in such a short period of time, I knew that I had to investigate this further and I, I just had to keep going. So um, over time, I didn't go the traditional way where I looked at what other standards-based or alternate assessment gradeless practitioners were doing. I went back to the educational research. So I went back and I read Bloom's. Um, I, I read John Sweller's cognitive load theory, Ruth Butler with her feedback research and, um, you know, Dylan William and, um, you know, the formative assessment. And so I, I went back to all of those things and just started putting elements of that together. And over six years, we got to a point where we had a model that was really effective for our students. And we always wanted to focus on transferable skills, stuff that they could use outside of our classroom. Because, you know, to be really honest, I knew that the majority of my students weren't going to be physicists. Um, a lot of them really didn't even enjoy science. So um, I really focused on, okay, we're using this as a vehicle to give you transferable skills that will help you in whatever you decide to do. And um, we built this so we could kind of expand it because we know that collective collective efficacy, like if we're all good, that's better for our students. So we built this with that in mind. And, you know, in our book, we actually talk to ELA teachers, we talk to math teachers, history teachers, and we show examples of how this platform could expand not only to a science class. This isn't how we do it. This is just how students learn how we can eliminate those obstacles across, you know, all subjects and how we can maybe get to a common language where students don't look at this as this is how I learn in your class. 
They just look at it as this is how I learn. Um, and, you know, we try to give practical examples. We give a step-by-step guide on, um, you know, if you're looking to go gradeless, here's how you can do it. We're also anybody who's in the process, who's already doing this. Um, we reached a few different plateaus and we talk about those plateaus and what we saw. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's funny, right before you said we try to make this for everyone, I'm sitting here going, so what you're telling me is it's for everyone, right? Um, Cause I agree. Like the way you laid it out. I love that. Um, couple notes that grabbed me one was well one ray uh is how much chad ostrowski i heard in there right started in a year that he was that they were struggling and having a hard time focusing on the growth versus the actual percentage you know the feeling the win i just dave if you don't know who chad is uh chad's our ceo co-founder he's also the creator of the grid method yeah so like it's so so much of your story uh, just echoes how the grid method was formed And, and and he didn't go to where what everyone else was doing in the classroom. He went to this research and that's what he pulled out and focus on. I love when you, the story of the student who got the 77, because a lot of people were looking like, Oh, she only got a 77 still struggling. But you said, no, look at the growth that this student had. And right? you focused on the growth, which I thought was just awesome. Um, the other thing I, I that really stood out to me was the, the fact that you were talking about how do we instill transferable skills in them not focused on are they going to be scientists do they love science but how do we utilize science as the vehicle i think is how you put it to instill these skills in them right uh, i think that's incredible and then and then you said you know toward the end about just how it's um focused on not this is how we did it how we do it in science class how we do it in any of these different things but this is how students learn um i think that's so important for people to pull out of there and take that away I uh, really appreciate the, the backstory, the depth you went in there right now, and I really appreciate you breaking that down for us. So um, we're going to give away a copy of the book, but but we're going to do that a little bit later, so make sure you keep listening around. We're going to do that because Dave's been awesome and is giving us a copy to, to give that away to someone who's listening here, so make sure you hang out for the rest of the episode for that. Dave, I want to get into, this is my favorite question I, I ask all the time, although right now I think at this very moment, the question I just asked was my favorite because your answer was so good. However, typically it's this question about, failure and pulling from an experience that we've had where we've had a failure, a struggle, something we've had to overcome and then pulling what we've learned from that. Because I think it's so powerful to pull from those experiences. So can you take us to a time that you've had a failure, kind of take us there with you, share with us what happened, how did you overcome that? And what did you pull away from that experience? Yeah, well, I mean, you could really look at my first three years teaching and pick any day that you want, um, because there were a lot of them in the beginning. And um, yeah, I, I think my biggest failure is putting my deficiencies on students. So in the beginning of my career, when things didn't go the way that I thought they should, it was easy for me to dismiss it as, well, this didn't happen because they didn't study. They didn't put in the time. They didn't put in the effort. And so, um, you know, that I think was my biggest failure because I, I think I actually failed those students with that mindset. And it wasn't until I had a few years of experience that I actually understood, oh, wait a second. You know, there's more than just them not wanting to do well there. And that's really the biggest lesson that I took from that. And that was one of the motivations that drove me in this direction to uh, look at assessment and grade reform because I was somebody who never really struggled with school. It's something that just kind of came easy to me. And when I became a teacher, I was alternate route. So I had zero um, formal training. I didn't take an education class until after my first day in the classroom, which is crazy. Um, So seeing how I was taught and how we're putting all of this on students, that failure led me to my mission to reform assessment and grading and just really make this experience more beneficial for all. And to this kind of conversation, we focus too much on how can we differentiate an A from a B um, rather than saying, how can we create a pathway for all students to learn? And that was really my biggest takeaway from all that. Oh, you know, Dave, I love talking grading, but I, I really, really appreciate you also sharing the narrative, the story behind all these pieces. Cause it's never, nobody ever just wakes up in the morning and says, 
I'm going to make a drastic change and I have no idea how it's going to go, right? But we all see all these tiny bits and pieces of evidence and growth and everything in between. And slowly but surely over the course of many months and many years, we finally get to a point where our grading mindset has shifted. And I it, it really excites me. We're, we're actually in a phase right now with Teach Better where we're doing a lot of support you know, on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. We're doing this live stream called Focus on the Focus, like all about grading. And mm-hmm. I just love, regardless of what the conversation really gets into, I love these conversations. So thank you for bringing all of this to us. When it comes to what like is fueling your fire, what's really keeping you excited about education and well, like everything you're doing, what would be that for you? Well, you know, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head right now, just that opportunity, right? And I know that's crazy to say in a time like this because things are so limited and we don't have our full student body in classes, but <clears throat> just the opportunity to have those conversations because we're seeing right now that there are so many inefficiencies with the way we've always done school. and you know, people are more receptive to these conversations. And I've had them with people all over the country and in different countries. And it's just great that everybody, not everybody, but, you know, there are a lot of people who are now willing to say, you know what, I get it. You know, there does need to be change. And I think the people who are hesitant are the ones, not that they think it's a bad idea, they just don't know where to start but they're willing to have that conversation now to say, okay, how can I start? And that to me is is very exciting. And, you know, it makes me want to talk to as many people as possible. Mm, See, I love that. So I want to get to advice. You know, advice is always something that I feel like as educators, we provide all the time, right? We're always eager to share, especially with the work you do. Like clearly you are always available for educators who want to do better. But when it comes to identifying one piece of advice that you'd want to give teachers, what would that one piece be? I'm sure it's very hard to pick one. Um, Take risks, right? That, that is the best piece of advice I could give to not just teachers, to anybody take risks, right? But especially for teachers, because our students get so used to seeing us do everything right. They never see a step outside of our comfort zone because, you know, we have our curriculum, like we've taught it for years that all they see is perfection. And when they're not that, they think there's something wrong with them. But when you take risks and step outside of your comfort zone, they can see that, you know what, not everything works and it's okay, right? How do we respond when that lesson bombs? You know, how do we respond when that demo doesn't work? right? How do we come back and just show them that, all right, you know what? It's not a big deal, right? Things don't go well all the time. And modeling that for students and letting them know that their education isn't linear, right? It's not a straight shot to you're a novice and now you're an expert. No, there's a lot of pitfalls along the way and taking risks helps them see that. Plus, it puts you in positions to learn things that you never would have expected meet people you never would have met um, all around. It's just been probably the most positive thing that I've done in my career. Uh, I love, I, I love just the, the focus on showing the students and, and it's, a, it goes back to model and behavior, but model on how do we handle, how do I handle a setback? How do I handle when, you know, like you said, when that lesson plan bombs, like, um, instead of trying to hide it and pretend like it didn't go bad, sharing with them and, and showing them that like, hey, it's okay. We make mistakes and this is how you get past it. This is how you handle it. That, that goes back to that infusing those skills in them, right? I yep. love that. Um, all right, let's, let's, um, we're going to get into the, the six questions really quick, but we're going to do first, let's do a book giveaway. So we're going to give away a copy of your book, Go on Grade List. Um, and let's, we're going to go to Twitter because I know you're active on Twitter. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, and, can I clarify? Can I win? Because I already have it in my Amazon ac- account. So I just want to like, wait, it's already in the this, cart, you know? We do this all the, you did this during the entire 12 hour live. You do this but, all the time. You Jeff, don't get to win. But Jeff. You get to host the podcast with me. You win all the time. But Jeff, it's ongoing grade list. Like I literally already have an Amazon cart and PayPal is hooked up. So should I just click buy now because I can't win or what? what's the plan here buddy i think you should click buy now 
So you're saying I can't win. I'm just saying you should click buy now. Okay, I'm going to click buy now. Go ahead with the instruction. <laughs> uh, well, thank uh, you, Ray. Well, if you want to win a copy of the book, head over to Twitter and tweet out. Make sure you at Teach Better Team, hashtag Teach Better Talk. And then, Dave, can you throw us what's your Twitter handle? It's at David Frangiosa. Can you spell that for everybody? Uh, David, F-R-A-N-G-I-O-S-A. All right, so make sure you tag Dave as well. And let's let's just do a simple question, Dave. How about share with us what does a grade represent in your classroom? Now that I say that, that might not be a simple answer, but do that in a tweet, uh, and we'll pick someone, and someone will get a copy of of David's book. Man, appreciate you doing that. That's awesome. Yeah, we no, love doing that. No problem. So appreciate that a whole lot. Um, let's have some fun. We're going to do the next six questions. Your goal is to answer each one in 15 seconds or less. You ready to go? I'm ready. All right. What is one ed tech tool you cannot live without? Uh, my LMS. Uh, I use Canvas. I have my entire course on there. That's how I communicate with students and parents. That's it. Uh, Give us a book you're reading right now. Uh, I'm really not reading books. I read a lot of research, but the last two books that I read, which were awesome, uh, We Got This by Cornelius Minor and Troublemakers by Carla Shalaby. Uh, Who do we need to follow on Twitter or Instagram today? Um, Chris Nessie, Stacey Lindis, and... um, AJ Bianco at Podcast BD and my friends over at the Peg Doesn't Fit. Uh, give us a good YouTube channel, website, or podcast educators should check out. Uh, School Rubric. They have a ton of great educators over there. Um, they have podcasts, blogs. Um, they're they're doing a ton of great stuff over there. Schoolrubric.com. Give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine every teacher should get into. Um. I think self-reflection and student surveys, right? Ask yourself and your students what worked, what didn't, how can we adjust? And give us the best piece of advice you've ever received. Whatever you do, always have the student's best interests in mind. Whew, boy, he destroyed this yeah. in the best way possible, didn't he, Ray? I know. Like- Dave, did you study for this part of the podcast? <laughs> What's the deal? You know what? Th- this is what I live every day. Oh. You know, so th- th- this is just, I love education, love talking about it. I have these conversations. So, um, you know, these good answer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what do you want him to say, Jeff? He's just that great. Like that's essentially <laughs> you know, it. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. We can leave it at that. I'm good. Well, Dave, I'm, I'm excited to tell you that you won the teach better trophy. I unfortunately <laughs> have to break the news to you that uh, as previously announced in previous episodes, there is no teach better talk trophy, but trust me, dude, you won it. Trust oh, me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Jeff, did you see those tweets out, by the way, about people that were listening to the episode when you spoiled the news that there is no Teach Better Talk trophy? Did I ruin it for people? I try to ignore negative things. No. I, I want to preface. The tweet I read this morning was, it's with a heavy heart that I announced. And it was them saying, like, that they, we've, like, ruined Santa for them. I'm just telling you. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, whoever that was that tweeted out, I'm very, very sorry. I did not mean to do that. I will look into getting an actual truth. Ooh, you heard it here first, people. I didn't say I was going to get it. I said I'd look into it. Well, I mean, there's, looking into there's it is a big is, difference there. It's a step in the right direction. It is a step in the right direction. I'm saying. You're right. That's You're all right. I'm saying. Well, uh, I want to make sure, Dave, that everybody is able to connect with you. If you wouldn't mind sharing like your website, your Twitter handle again. Again, I want you to repeat the book title, just anywhere that they can go to connect with your content. Sure. Uh, So Twitter, uh, that's the best uh, place to reach me. It's at David Frangiosa. Um, That's D-A-V-I-D-F-R-A-N-G-I-O-S-A. Uh, the book is Going Gradeless, Shifting the Focus to Student Learning. Um, that's with Corwin Press. Um, I have a blog at um, and a website, um, reimaginedschools.com, and I uh, put out a podcast weekly um, just with a lot of the concepts from the book. I love it. You know, you can find all the links, all the resources, and everything we mentioned in this episode over at teachbetter.com, as well as the really important links for Connect with Dave and keep the conversation going. So make sure you head over to teachbetter.com for all of that. Be sure to hit subscribe to so miss any upcoming episodes and give us a rating review if you can. We really, really appreciate that a lot. And let's keep taking this one step further. Think of just three of your colleagues who need to hear these amazing stories and connect with these amazing educators and just share this podcast with them. 
David, man, this was awesome. Uh, so much value in this uh, this episode. I'm super excited for people to to learn from it, to hopefully reach out and connect with you and keep those conversations going. And excited to just continue to get to know you more. You're, you're part of the family now. You can't get rid of us. It just <laughs> is what it is. But really, really appreciate uh, you taking some time and hanging out with us, man. Well, Thank you. Thanks for having me. Until next time, let's get out there and let's teach better. <laughs>